soon as I got home, there were four martyrs in our street, as though waiting for me to say goodbye to them. When I was done with that, three more martyrs from the same family in our street arrived. As soon as we buried them and returned, our neighbor's house, two houses down the street, was bombed by the army, and the house was wiped off the ground. Everyone died. I felt most sad for the little girls. I thought the state of war and the scenes of martyrs and destruction would affect people's appetite for food. But it seemed the state of fear and horror and worry makes people more hungry and they eat more. I hate the silence and the abnormal tolerance that people have. I wish all Gaza would wake up tomorrow and walk the streets shouting loudly, ENOUGH! After the war, I started to always dress in a very clean and tidy way, so that if I die, I die a nice death. But it would be the biggest problem if I was hit by a rocket because, I, because I'd become a hundred pieces, and I'd like to die in one piece. Wow. Gaza and Gaza's dreams. Our dream has become to die a good death, not to live a good life. I want to tell you a big secret that I'm holding in my chest and hesitating to say since I started speaking. The secret is my dear folks, I am the reason for the war on Gaza. You might be surprised as to why, because I never had a dream that didn't come true. The only hour that is different in my life is when I, when I come to the theater practice. It became my work and mission. I wait for it impatiently. Without the theater, I would have gone crazy. When I grow up, I want to be a big actor. I've loved, I've loved acting since I was a kid. After the war, I had a breakdown. A big, wild wave overtook my soul. I was thinking I wouldn't be able to come out from under it. But it was like a hand was extended to me through the theater. A rubber ring that pulled me out from under the wave. Today, I feel a comfort that I haven't felt in a long time. And I hope I can always stay like this.